everybody, and welcome back to the Tea with Grandma. My name is Chris. I'll be your host today, and I'm joined by my best friend, Emma. What up, y'all? Today, we are celebrating almost to the day our third year anniversary of our very first real episode. Therapy is expensive, so we started a podcast instead. I know that we did release a self-care episode with a very similar title not too (laughs) long ago, and that was a well-timed episode, but this is the true reflection on doing the podcast itself, what it's been like all these years to work with your best friend on what is closer to like a work project as opposed to just working on your friendship. Our Therapy Still Expensive episode is a reflection on our self-care journey in those three years. So very, very similar episodes, just a lot of reflection, especially as, you know, another year comes to a close. It is really that it's that time just annually for everyone to just really reflect and set intentions for the year moving forward. Before we get started, Emma, what tea did you bring today? Today I am drinking a lemon tea. I went to the convenience store because normally they have these lemon teas that are warm. And I felt like I just needed a warm lemon tea. But apparently the convenience store that I live next to doesn't have a warm section. So they will be hearing from me very soon, Mr. Family Mart. Are you saying warm isn't just like not in the refrigerator? No, like it's like in a hot section. Like you know how they have like a cold section in the in the supermarket? This one is specifically for hot things. Like Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it's like hot drinks. There's hot food. It's like a whole thing. But apparently the one that's like closest to my house doesn't have one or they might. And I just didn't bother asking today. Is it like a bottle warmer? Kind of. It's literally next to the cold section, which is refrigerated. And this one is like heated, like almost like a, like an oven warmer. (laughs) That's cool. Yeah. So usually they have the warm drinks, but I have to settle for the cold lemon tea today. So this is one of my faves. But yeah. What are you drinking today, Christopher? Today, I have a tea called Fresh by Tea Fay Infusions, and it is a green tea with spearmint, ginger, and hibiscus. And I was hopeful because of the the spearmint and the ginger, but it kind of veered into that kind of issue that I found with hibiscus-based teas, where it just, it's, it's just hibiscus. It's, Uh. it just has the hibiscus flavors. I'm not getting any spearmint any ginger i'm not even really getting the green tea base so it's really just like a floral fruity hibiscus tea does hibiscus do that thing to you in the back of your throat when you drink the tea as well where it kind of dries it do you find no, that no it's kind of i find it tart mm. so yeah just, kind of sour favorite yeah yeah it doesn't so dry you- the back of my throat but it's not my favorite uh. it's like a it's it's a two i don't know if it would have just been like less hibiscus Maybe it was because I went in really wanting the mint part and then just got hibiscus. Ah, I feel like that would be like a really nice like iced tea though. Like an iced tea. Hibiscus is amazing as an iced tea. Mm. But as a hot tea, it's just kind of like hot sour soup. Hot flour soup. (laughs) Yeah. So eh, that's a two star tea today. Maybe like that sometimes. So happy birthday to you with crema. And here we are today. We're three years old. We're three years old. You can now walk and potentially have control over your bowels. But good for you, tea with crumb. (laughs) Something I did not know. Okay, anyway, moving past this awkward conversation, let's start with the beginning, Christopher. Why did we create this show? I think at first it was just kind of like a funny mentioning of like, ha ha ha, we should have a podcast. I know. I just remember driving to the general Dallas area together and it was just something that we had mentioned. I don't really know the context behind it, but it just, it just came up in conversation. Mind you, at that time, I had never heard of any podcast. I did not listen to podcasts. I didn't know anything about podcasts. And conveniently, shortly thereafter, I got the call to go on to What the Trio. And then I started listening to Why Won't You Date Me by Nicole Byer. And it just, really stuck to me. And I figured actually, maybe this could be something that we do. Started learning more about the mechanics of it and just committed. It became serious all of a sudden. I don't know what changed. It just became serious. That's funny too, because like, I don't remember the moment that it became like, oh, like this is actually like a thing that's happening because before it was very much like, oh, we're so funny. And like other people think we're funny together. Like, let's do it. And then all of a sudden it started kind of like 
forming and like not, I don't want to say snowballing but I think more people started hyping us up that like oh yeah you guys would be so funny on a podcast and then I was on what the trio then you were on what the trio and then together we were on what the trio and that's kind of when everything started to become manifested I feel like because I think even on my episode with what the trio I had mentioned like oh my best friend and I have thought about starting a podcast ha 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 and then it was like they're like oh let's bring Chris on and then together we came on and they're like you guys need to do it and we're like okay <laughs> so it Started didn't really, really take, looking into it it didn't really take too much convincing it sounds like <laughs> Honestly, you just needed enough people to be like, you should do it. And then what the trio kind of provided a, a base knowledge of the mechanics of how. And I was like, actually, this does not sound terrible. Truly. Yeah. And it's been three years. So clearly it hasn't been that bad. <laughs> That's true. Okay. So we know why we started it. What has been, and we're going to start like kind of like when you do a parent teacher conference with a child, you start off with things that they are doing well in, and then you go into the things that they can work on and then you end with the and this is why they're you like this is what you're looking forward to in the future so kind of in that same style what has been your least favorite part of creating a podcast with me your best friend (laughs) i think that for me the hardest part was the move to japan because then I had to really start thinking about, okay, are we just using our time, not necessarily diligently, because that implies that it was only ever work, but making sure that when we are doing the podcast, that it is also a time for us to just connect and talk about non-podcasty things. Because ultimately, with the time zone differences and the work schedules and all of the other things, and also you needing to connect with people who are not me or Isaac or your mom or your sister, and still having to navigate those time zone differences, it was not always easy or feasible for us to just FaceTime. And Mm -hmm. so, okay, if we're doing the podcast, we got to make sure that we're kind of hitting two birds with one stone without making it feel like it's we're on here because we're doing work of the podcast, but then also like forcing the friendship conversations too. Yeah. So I think that was hard that first year that you were there. Oh, definitely. That fun balance of it. But it's gotten, that part has gotten better. And then otherwise, least favorite is just, it's editing. We're still looking for an editor if you are low cost, maybe wanting to build your portfolio. (laughs) Because boy, that is not my favorite part at all. Yeah, I think my least favorite part, echoing the same thing that you said, but also like feeling like I was letting you down in a lot of places. Like I understood, like there was so much labor that you were putting on your end. And we had to have that conversation when I first moved here, like, okay, pause. Are we doing the podcast just to do the podcast? Or are we doing the podcast because we really enjoy doing it? Like, are we using it as a way to connect with each other when like, why go through six hours, 10 hours of editing when we could just have a FaceTime call (laughs) and do that? You know, and it was really finding that balance. But I definitely think that like, yeah, that's been my least favorite part was feeling like I wasn't pulling my weight and knowing I wasn't pulling my weight because like I'm not doing the editing, right? I am in charge of the social media, which is a lot less labor on my part, but I wasn't pulling the labor that I should have been doing. So definitely that is something that I'm working on. We're both working on trying to figure out, you know, making sure that it's very equitable for both of us because you still have a life outside of the podcast. Like, and we both still want to be friends outside of the podcast i think that's the biggest part right it's like this is not going to be a friendship ending podcast (laughs) like we're still (laughs) even even past this podcast no matter how long it lasts like we're still going to be best friends at the end of it right and it's like still maintaining those relationships that we have with each other and like making sure that when we do talk to each other it's not just podcast driven right it's like other things are going on as well Things I'm not trying to have the end of the Tea with Crema episode. And it's like, also, we will never see each other after this episode. So thanks, guys, for the journey. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) And then we can like do like, where are they now? And this was the episode that the friendship ended. (laughs) This moment, we can watch it. It was right here. Did you hear the tone of voice? It changed right then. And it wasn't even a ha-ha change. It was a serious change. (laughs) 
So things that's not that's not the episode we're trying to record. That's not on our docket of episodes that we're planning for. So <laughs> not happening. We are not dropping that kind of tea, everyone. I know. I feel like everyone is like waiting for juicy tea. They want juicy tea. And that's not it, because I would just as soon drop the podcast. <laughs> I'm just going to, if it came down to like friendship or podcast, I'm dropping the podcast because we make zero dollars off of this thing. <laughs> In fact, we lose money. <laughs> we definitely, it's a net loss every year. So for three years running, it's been a solid net loss. So I'm just going to put that out there. It is what it is. Uh, oh but in gosh. other... You know, everything has its goods and its bad. So, you know, on the other side of your Oreo cookie delivery, what's the sweet side, your favorite parts of the podcast? Wait, so then you agree that the least favorite part is the cream? No. Yes. Of an Oreo cookie? No, the cookie part's kind of gross. I only like the mushroom, not mushroom filling. The marshmallow Marshmallow. filling. (laughs) Yeah, I only like the filling. Not so much. I don't like the triple stuff that's too much filling, but like double (laughs) stuff is really good. That's disgusting. Anyway, I'm an Oreo thin gal because I do not like the filling, but that is not the point. What I was trying to get at was because you said on the Oreo cookie, which means that cookie, cream, Oreo... (laughs) I just know that's the analogy people use. Yes, but then that means that cookie was that it was good. Cream means that it was not good. And the other side of the cookie is now, what is your favorite part? (laughs) Can we put that as a a question on the Instagram? Because is that actually the consensus that people have? I know that's the analogy, but I thought the cream part was the best part. Isaac would agree with you. I hate the cream part. Anyway, we're going to bring that up to contestants on the podcast. Cookie versus cream of the Oreo because cream, yuck. I was one of those kids that would also like open the Oreo, scrape off the cream and like dunk the cookie. That's funny because I would scrape off the cream and then just kind of eat the cream and throw the cookie away. (laughs) We would have been great friends growing up. Okay, sorry. Super convenient. (laughs) Enough Oreo talk. (laughs) What really what has is- been your favorite part? <laughs> <laughs> Other than us being able to argue over <laughs> trivial things such as Oreo and what is the best part of Oreos, I think my favorite part has definitely been like taking these conversations that we've been having and like inviting more people into the conversation, right? Like a lot of these podcast episode ideas get spawned from messages to each other talking about different things. And then we, you know, escalate it to a like, to like, this episode platform um i think just like being able to like see our friendship grow in that way as well you know it it really has us like looking at each other's like different viewpoints and really understanding each other from that perspective as well which i don't know if we would have had not being on a podcast i'm sure we would have you know eventually um but yeah what has been your favorite part of creating a podcast i don't know i think i like the production of it all like there's not the necessarily i wouldn't call it theatrics but just like the the everything, the production of the episodes themselves and recording them and having questions and a direction. And I also think in part is the podcast has helped me to guide some of the reflection that I have in my own life. It has helped me try new things, sparked conversations with people, held me accountable to the things that I, I say and set and do for myself. And so I think just the the overall experience is something that I've really, just the production of it all. It's just like such a grand, I mean, it's not grand, you know, we're still on a budget, but shoestring budget out here, but it's just, it's a, it's an experience. It's a grand experience. And I think that's one of the things I'm actually, now that I've done it a while, I am more grateful for. Because in the beginning, there is just kind of the, you know, you're just feeling it out. You're just trying to find things. But now to have traditions and episodes that we do regularly over time, check-ins that we're having, being able to invite guests and talk to different people has been has been very, very nice. Although I think, I feel like they've been mostly my guests. I feel like you're, you're you got to step up your guest game, you know? <laughs> my guest game is a little lacking. <laughs> It's fine. I'm like talking to all of my friends on the podcast. I'm like, okay, so Emma, I haven't met anyone new on the podcast yet. So what you're noticing is I have no friends. <laughs> my friend repertoire is, I've had one. I've Hold on. I had two. I had now and I had Isaac, which Isaac was like a low key gimme because yeah, he's my husband. But I also knew both of those people before we did episodes with them. But like barely. 
Like you knew now. Like like you knew now. Okay, besides Isaac, I feel like he doesn't count. Like he's like an extension of me at this point. And you've brought on two guests as well. You didn't know Brian. I didn't know Brian, but I had met Brian. But I feel like okay, okay, that's true. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And I like didn't really know Shemaine either as well. Like you had definitely (sighs) met Shemaine for sure. Yeah, but but like it was very in passing. Like oh hi, nice to meet you. Like she works down the hall. And by the time that we had had the episode with now. I did know now pretty well. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's and, true. In fact, oh, that inspired her to become a vegetarian by that. That's point. true. It was like already six months by that point that you guys had met and like been talking regularly. I'm saying, and then we had the mutual invite of what the trio. Yes, yes. So I'm Thanks just saying, you know, you gotta really. That's gonna be your goal this upcoming okay. year. My goal is in to year, bring on one more guest. <laughs> in in year three of the tea with crema, that is that's Emma's goal is to really. Bring on a guest, someone that I have not met before and I do not know. That's You've heard the it caveat. here first, folks. So I can't bring my sister on. <laughs> nope, that does not count. Because I, I know her, cannot bring your mom. Also, does not count. I mean, I guess your dad could count. I've only met him like once. Yeah, true, true, once true. actually. So that that yeah. would that would count. But he would count. <laughs> He I'm would count, saying. and then he would take over the podcast. So that's a that's a no for me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, fine. it'd be like that. So hindsight is always twenty twenty. In this case, twenty twenty two. Just kidding. Um, what are some things that you would have done differently, if anything? So I think in a perfect hindsight moment, where I could actually go back and not make those minor changes of like, oh, instinctually this would have made more sense, but truly but truly sat down with myself at the start of the podcast and given advice on some of those things, it would be, hey, these are some work styles that you're going to discover later on in your journey in terms of things that are important to you that you hold dear. And so those are things that you're going to have to work out with Emma because you don't necessarily see eye to eye on these things realistically, actually. These are conversations you guys got to have earlier and don't be afraid to have them because part of it was, I don't want to hurt your feelings. So I was just like, it's fine. We'll just keep trying to work through it and it will be okay mm-hmm. somehow. And then that's when it gets to a point of just, it does become a more contentious moment as opposed mm-hmm. to hindsight. I would have been like, Hey, y'all are going to have issues about A, B, and C. <laughs> just go ahead and, I mean, I right now go ahead and iron it out, but in those go moments, you know, hash it out, <laughs> hash it out, figure it out. Don't go ahead and split up the editing. Clearly, that is not something that works. So, like, divvy the load differently. Find other ways. And then, I mean, I really think that's that's really it. I don't think we've run into major mechanical issues in terms of the podcast. We've not run into any of those type of issues. We've not reached a point where. We did have a slight idea dry spell one time over the summer, but all of a sudden it was like we we ran out for a little bit and then we've just been, oh my gosh, where do we put this episode and how do we put this one in? And oh, there's a random episode that we have to record and release tomorrow because it just has to be tomorrow. We're so passionate about this idea. <laughs> you know, shout out to Black Panther episode. That was a Wakanda forever. That episode was produced in 24 <laughs> hours. When I tell you, that, we, was, that was such a quick turnaround time. I was so impressed on that one. So it's possible. I wouldn't, I, I would like not want to do that regularly, but it's definitely, you can definitely record or produce, write an episode, record it, edit it, and release it in 24 hours. It's possible, in case you were wondering. <laughs> so that would be definitely like hindsight things is here's some issues that you're going to have work wise. Go ahead and hash it out now. Yeah, I agree. I think that because also this was our our real like first time working together, right? We had, I think professionally, we had seen what each other can do just because we like both were teaching, we were both doing like kick ass things in the classroom. And but it was so different, right? Like you were in elementary, I was in middle school, high school. So like we saw each other and we were both being successful in our own ways. So I think that we thought that that would translate into the success of the podcast. But then it was like, this is how I reached my success versus this is how you reached your success. So like our work styles were not compatible in some ways, um, which, you know, we didn't know that that was a conversation we needed to have because we had both been seeing success, you know, outside of the podcast, which I felt like that was kind of where 
Um, but yeah, definitely like we should have in hindsight, obviously, right? We should have talked about A, B, and C thing and talked about all of those different things. And I think also just like on my part too, like knowing that even if we're going to have like in a disagreement, it doesn't mean that our friendship is over. Cause I feel like that was always like in the back of my head, like, oh no, like we're going to have a disagreement and Chris isn't going to want to be my friend anymore, which is such like a juvenile way of thinking, but also like, I have a pattern of behaviors. So. <laughs> I was just like, this is the thing that he cuts me off for, guys. It was a good, it was a good two year run. <laughs> but also, no, but like, but seeing like you, you've changed so much since that has happened, like since all of that, you know, has happened and things like that. So yeah, I think in hindsight, there were certain things that we just like, we just didn't know what was going to happen until things were happening. And then like how to approach the things that were happening as well. And in case anyone was wondering what A, B and C were, it's really just A, it was one thing. And it was just, you know... Sometimes episodes were coming out late or not at all. Very late. Or just, I was just, there was a lot of things going on, guys. I was just dropping the ball in a lot of places. And we have rectified that. We have figured it out, you know? And then it was so, it wasn't that so funny though when you're talking about the dry spell. I was like, there was like a point where we were like pulling ideas. And I was like, what about this one? You're like, no. And then you'd be like, what about this one? And I was like, no. And it was like, for two people who have no ideas and then are bringing ideas and each of us are shutting down the ideas, like, what are we doing? It was a wild, specifically summer 2022. It was a weird time to be podcasting for us. It, it was, was, yeah. And then, like, I was, like, barely in the same time zone. I was getting married. I was, like, I had COVID. <laughs> I was, the summer was weird. It's okay. We'll we'll talk more about the year 2022 in our vision board part one episode. But, no. yeah, nope, that time was weird. And then I think just getting back into the rhythm of everything, because the summer was such a deviation from the normal rhythm, like, you were not working I, for one month out of the summer, am not working. And so I don't know, something about almost like sitting idle, it just, my brain did not want to cooperate. And then, yeah, once we like found the new balance, it was totally fine. Mm -hmm. So we've been fine since. It's totally fine. The next time that there's an issue, we'll see what happens. You know, year three coming in strong. Karma is not getting a divorce, everyone. That is what we are here to say. Exactly. We're using the podcast as therapy. Things we cannot afford, couples therapy. We couldn't afford singles therapy. Why would we afford couples therapy? That's, this is nonsense. That's two people. Like, how are we going to do that? Like, no. Anyway. Okay. Last question. Final rating of working with your best friend on a Yelp scale of one to five stars. Okay. So I give the tea with crema five stars. <laughs> I give working with your best friend, long term, two stars. I was about to say the same thing. I was like, I enjoy working with you. I love you as a person, you know? I love you as my best friend. And I was like thinking, and I was like, yeah, tea with crema, five out of five. Working with your best friend, which they also say, like, don't room with your best friend, right? Like, don't live with your best friend. Yeah, I'd give us a solid 40%. Two stars out of five. <laughs> and I think part, I will say, you know, don't, when they're usually saying don't room with your best friend, it's typically college age years, which again, we were still pretty fresh out of college mm-hmm. when the tea with crema started. And I think part of it is, you know, you just got to learn how to not let the little things and everything. I don't like typically quoting love is blind. This most recent episode they had was don't let roommate issues become marriage issues. So very similar here. Don't let roommate issues become best friend issues. (laughs) Just really separating out the like, okay, this is a small thing. We can actually talk and work through it. And it does not reflect on our ability to be friends. And it's also not necessarily like a reflection of like, I think you're a terrible person. It's just like, we just have different work styles and it's fine. It's not like a fundamental thing, like you're an atheist and I like <laughs> believe in God and need us to work this out. That was a reference to season two of Love is Blind. <laughs> Our core identities were not in conflict. Exactly. <laughs> it was, yeah, it's the little things. So yeah, I agree. Five stars. Tea with Crema is great. It's wonderful. I enjoy listening to the episodes. And I think so, because I, I will say I listen to them late and especially like as the person editing them, it kind of. It gives me time to be surprised by some of the things that happen. (laughs) Which is funny because then you're probably like, wow, that was a great edit on that one. (laughs) 
was not there expecting some moments. <laughs> Because I listen to them about a month later, because it gives me time. Like we will have typically have recorded another episode, I will have edited another episode in that time, so it gives me time and space to be away from the episode. And then I listen back. I'm like, that was wonderful. I <laughs> loved that moment. Thank you so much. <laughs> I thinking myself, am it's hilarious. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I so good at this? <laughs> so yes, tea with grandma five. It's okay. I was almost going to give us one star, but I was like, no, I feel like if it was one star, we would have stopped the podcast by now. <laughs> if it was a one star, we should probably not have a podcast and we definitely need to go to couples therapy. <laughs> We're going to have to get our scrounge together our couch pennies and go to couples therapy if that were the case. Because <laughs> the street therapy is clearly not working. So it's okay. fine. Well, with that, that means towards the end of our episode, it is time for our... Rapid fire question! Christopher! Hey! I like dedicated myself. I was, I was going to find this ridiculous horn, so I found it. It is here to stay, the air horn. Found it. Mm. Shout out Riverside for letting me just embed it into the episode. It is there. Oh my gosh, guys, that was like a literal live reaction. Anyway, that happened. That was true. True moment that was like, there. I was so excited. Oh my God. I think I might cry. Anyway, on the same vein, I'm going first in the questions per usual. On the same vein of working with your best friend, clearly we became best friends for a reason. So what qualities do we think are the best in each other? So I'm saying what I think is your best quality. As a friend, yes. And I'm saying what I think is my best quality in you, which okay. or what my best qualities that I think that you have. Mm-hmm, well, no, mm-hmm, what I think mm-hmm. your best qualities, <laughs> whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Why are you my best friend? That's basically what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, Emma's best quality is very articulate. Yes. And eloquent, she, some may say. <laughs> honestly, I just I've never met a person who puts their thoughts together in just such... A graceful way, honestly. I've just, I've never heard her stutter. I have, it just, it's so put together. Wise, even. (laughs) Rehearsed, maybe? (laughs) You know it's rehearsed if it sounds too good. (laughs) (laughs) No, in all seriousness, I would say, Emma is, you are a wonderful, supportive, hype person. So you're not just that person that's like, oh, yeah, like, go and do it. Like, it'll be fine. Like, it's truly like a, like, no, 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 I I believe you can do it. Go and do it. And then sometimes you're, I'll push you. And then you'll do it. And it'll totally be fine. And so just that sense of, like, supportive hype person who's always like, no, no, do it, do it, do it, try it. Also, here's a link on how to do it in case you were freaking yourself out. Also, I've booked you an appointment. So now you have to do it. <laughs> So that's what I'd say. That sense of like supportive commitment. Oh, that's nice. Okay, wait. Sorry. Can I have a slight story time about my eloquence? Sure. <laughs> with, an, with an event that I had that happened to me yesterday that was so cool. <laughs> Shout out to Lil Nas X. Okay, guys. So I met Lil Nas X yesterday at brunch. Okay. And so he's standing in line and I'm looking at Isaac and I'm like, Isaac, should I go talk to him and ask him for a picture? And I'm texting Chris at the same time because I'm like, Chris, is this Lil Nas X or is this just a black expat that Isaac is not knowing who this is? Because I looked at Isaac. He was like, at first he goes, Emma, that's Lil Nas X. And I look at him and I was like, Isaac. And he was like, I'm not (laughs) being racist. And so I like go on his his Instagram and I'm like, oh my God, it's Lil Nas X. But first Chris said, Emma, I think that's him. And I was like, no. Anyway, I'm hyping myself up for about like five or 10 minutes trying to like work up the nerve to go talk to him. So I go and talk to him and I'm like, hi, I don't want to be disrespectful. Like you can definitely tell me no, um, because I know you're here with your friends, but would it be okay if I got a picture with you? And he goes, yeah, of course. Or no, he first he said, girl, you're being hella rude and disrespectful. And he goes, ha, just kidding. I'm like, let's get the selfie. And I'm like, oh, okay. So we're like talking and I'm trying to tell him that I had seen a picture of him in this Tongan attire because he was his Tongan bodyguards, bodyguards, godfathers to like his daughter. And so I was like trying to tell him that. And I was like, you were the God, you were the God, you were the, and I was like trying to formulate in my head that he was the godfather to his Tongan bodyguards, 
daughter. <laughs> and Isaac was just like, I went back and I was like, Isaac, WTF, what did I just tell that man? And he was like, I was really confused. And then you started throwing gang signs at him. And I was like, I wasn't. Because there's this like, there's this like thing that Tong and Zhu where they like put up their tea, but it's like rooted in gang, like gang history. And I was like, yeah, you know, like tea's up. And he was like, oh yeah, what's up? That's what's up. Like tea's up. And I was like, I walked away and Isaac was like, what the hell just happened? And I was like, Isaac, what did I just do? So now he keeps telling the story and I just keep getting embarrassed every time I hear it. Oh no. So that was a time. They're on gang signs up in Japan. (laughs) So that was my really eloquent moment that I had with Lil Nas X trying to tell him I thought it was really cool that he was in his tongue and attire, did not know how to say that he was the godfather to this man's daughter. I'm going to go ahead and not edit any part of that story. So if anyone's like, oh, no, he edited it to make it sound better. Nope. That's her true story from start to finish. The truth. Embarrassing. Like, I'm literally getting embarrassed all over again. Like, I keep, it keeps playing in my head. Like, why couldn't you just tell him, like, you liked the song Montero? Like, why didn't you just (laughs) ask him? Like, why didn't you just tell him I'm a big fan and move on? Like, why did you have to bring up that you're Tongan? Like... Just, also, why would you choose the most challenging string of words <laughs> to put together in such a high stress moment? What in your mind was thinking, oh my god, it's so cool that you were the godfather to your body god. Your body god. I can't do it. <laughs> to your body guard's daughter. <laughs> I'm not even in the moment, and I can't get all those words out. Oh, I, can you imagine what I looked like? <laughs> and he just looked... The thing that I loved, though, was that he was so patient with me, and he was trying to keep the interest. <laughs> but, he, but you could just tell in his eyes that he was like, is this woman? Is she having a stroke? And I was just like... Oh, my God. It was oh, so no. embarrassing. So that's just... Next time, just, like, compliment his shoes. Just... I was just... I was just trying to tell him that Tongan Twitter was like, he's our cousin now. And he was like, yeah, that's that's super funny because I saw it all over Twitter. But then also the Polynesians were hella dragging me. And I was like, oops, that wasn't me. I swear I was, like, so excited that you were in your Taobala. Like... Oh, my oh. God. Just next time, just compliment the man's anything else. I... Shirt... Pants, outfit, song. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know, know, I just wanted Emma. to be like, there was a lot going on. Okay, back to the original question. <laughs> it's okay. It's your turn now. Things I love about Christopher is that he is not afraid to laugh at me. <laughs> or call out my ridiculousness. Like, why did you think that was a good idea? No, I'm just kidding. The one thing I do love about you and think is one of your best qualities is your loyalty. I think you are like loyal to a fault. Like once someone is like your friend and like you're like on like up to that level for you, you're like so ride or die, especially in terms of like support too. Like I think when you say like I'm a hype woman and whatever, like, you know, you're like in there like, okay, how can I support you? How are we going to get you to that next level? You know, but again, different hype people, <laughs> different styles of hyping. <laughs> um, But I also think that you're like so good at like, keeping your accountability to that right as well like you're like well you said you were gonna do it so why haven't you done it (laughs) and that's one of those things i can always appreciate because i'm like okay if i tell chris i'm gonna do something like i gotta be ready to back it up and like actually do it so yeah that is one of those things i appreciate about you too i'm so excited to be the godfather to your bodyguard's daughter (laughs) oh my god am i your bodyguard then (laughs) This is too many. I don't know what you were thinking with that phrase. I'm still struggling in slow motion. I just, I don't know. I can't get bodyguard's daughter out in a normal You're pacing. the godfather to your bodyguard's daughter. Like, it's just that guard, gu- guard and daughter. <laughs> but then <laughs> God. And- <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Charlie Brown. <laughs> so many things it's okay so embarrassed i'm gonna keep my my question very simple would you rather learn archery or fencing archery because then when the apocalypse happens i can hunt for food what about you you? walk up to the deer and like i'm god 
I don't think I think the deer has enough self preservation that it'll run away before I get to my on guard. <laughs> get to your stance. What about you? What would you rather know how to do? Definitely archery. I don't I don't know what what who would I fence with? Like I just archery is something you can do by yourself. Okay, Katniss and Evergreen. <laughs> Someone else has to fence for me to do that. Otherwise like what's the point? So I would oh, say archery. Mm, that's a good one. I like it. All right, Emma, where can people find the podcast? I also just want to point out that I have to do this whole part, and this requires me to be eloquent, and you don't know how many takes we have to do to get through this one single part, okay? (sighs) You can find our podcast on Instagram and Twitter, and now Facebook, at The Tea with Crema. You can also stream us anywhere that you stream your podcasts, including YouTube. If you'd like to buy us a cup of tea, Please Venmo us at the Tea with Crema. We hope to see you next time. Bye.